Hey everyone, welcome back to a new Big Goals Little Steps video. In case you're new here, my name is Sarah and I'm the owner of Peppo Studios, which is a teeny tiny itty bitty little small business and I consider myself a service pattern designer in training. So I talk all about that on this channel, but in case this is your very first Big Goals Little Steps video, just kind of a recap of what I'm doing with these, I'm essentially documenting all of the little steps that I'm taking to get toward my big business goals. I'm trying to do this every two weeks and set myself kind of two week goals. Like what am I going to go out and achieve in the next two weeks that get me towards these big picture goals? Okay, before I jump into the goals that I had set out for the last two weeks, I want to start this video by saying, firstly, it's like a week later than I generally upload these. So it's actually been three weeks since my last video, not two weeks. So you'll see that as I talk through what my goals I set out in my last video were and like what I did with those goals because the real reality is my life has been really busy in the past three weeks. I work a full-time nine-to-five job and I've been doing a couple trips for, for work so I've been traveling for that and then I also traveled for personal stuff too. I traveled with my partner to Florida. We actually got to go to Disney which is really fun. I filmed a lot of our trip to Disney. If you actually look further back in this channel I used to do a lot of Disney vlogs. It was a great time but I didn't get to work on a lot of Peppa Studio stuff while I was there. And then work in general has just been picking up so I don't know things are very busy. And so in terms of the small little step kind of goals that I've been setting out for myself, it was hard in the past three weeks to fit everything in. So because of that, I think that this video may contain some goals that I didn't hit and that's okay. So we'll get into that. But with that, I just wanted to give you like a little context for why this one might be a little bit different from the previous ones and just like show you that this is real life and this is what it looks like to be trying to build these skills and build a business with real life stuff happening all the time. So. Anyway, with that, now let's jump into the goals that I set out for myself the past two weeks and kind of see where I landed with those. Okay, so the first goal that I had set out for myself for the past two or three weeks was to start Immersion. But in case you don't know, Immersion is a very intense eight week program in surface pattern design. And so like the first kind of half is learning Adobe Illustrator and surface pattern design techniques and theories and things like that. And then the second half is more focused on creative entrepreneurship and like licensing your artwork and building a brand and building a business and, and that kind of thing. So it's really well suited for what I'm hoping to do with my business and that is something that I'm doing. And so I did achieve this goal. I did start immersion. It started on March 6th, I believe was the first day of like the orientation week. So we had this, well, it's called the foundations module. So I did that module it was the very beginning. It was kind of like learning how to find inspiration and kind of go about your life with this surface pattern design filter on and just kind of start to see the world from a perspective of how you'll create the art that you want to create. And so that was that one. And then my Module one was introduction to Adobe Illustrator. And so it was kind of a big picture overview of Illustrator and kind of the specific uses that, that will be implemented for surface pattern design. And I some of this was familiar to me, but a lot of it was new to me because I had taken a few of Bonnie's free classes last year. And then also on Skillshare, I've taken a good, good number of surface pattern design classes, including several that use Adobe Illustrator. So like some of this stuff was familiar, but a lot of it was new to me. And like a lot of it is gonna just require a lot of practice to like get into a flow. But yeah, it's pretty, it's a lot of content. So, so I guess I can say module two, I'm also working on right now. So that was released this past week. And both of these modules have like over four hours of recorded video content. And then Bonnie also does kind of like office hours. She calls them take 10, where she basically is taking 10 questions from the community like three times a week. And those are hour long sessions as well. And so it's, it's a ton of course content. And I have my workbook right here. I would show you it but my cat is sleeping on it actually you know who wouldn't love to see that so let me show you here's the workbook <laughs> <laughs> and this is Alicia so this is a huge workbook that um, I've been working my way through Okay, let's let's bring this back. <laughs> but yeah, it's a ton of content. So it's one of the reasons why you'll see like I didn't necessarily get to put a ton of time into other stuff over the past three weeks because like it's a very immersive course, you know, and like if you really want to dedicate yourself to it, y you just have to put a lot of time to it. And it might not sound like a lot to say like four hours of content within a week, but that's like just a video. If you were just to sit through and watch the whole video, sure, it would take you four hours. But the reality is, is like you want to 
implement these skills and practice them and follow along and then use them on your own things and you know try and really work the muscles of service pattern design in, in Adobe Illustrator and so it, it definitely takes way longer than four or four and a half hours if you are really trying to build these skills in a way that you're able to use them without just like following along with the video but it's been awesome honestly like the community is really really nice there's a lot of people in the course there's like over 2,000 people in the course and so the actual community hub there's a lot going on all the time but I have a couple of smaller groups that have been really awesome there's uh, on Instagram I started this pretty little group there's like maybe 14 people in it who had reached out to me when I posted originally about joining immersion um, and I was like having a hard time having individual conversations with like 14 different people about the same thing and so I was like wait let's just like make a group let's get everyone together and so that's been a really awesome group chat because people have been so supportive and like sharing their wins and sharing their struggles and stuff so that was cool and then I'm also in an immersion study group so that's like an add-on that you can purchase when you buy the course where you can be in a really small study group that's like hand-picked and tailored for you based on your time zone and availability and that kind of thing and you're like level in the journey you know whether you're brand new or you're pretty established like either either way um, and so I actually missed my first study group meeting because that was when I was in uh, Florida <laughs> but actually just this morning I joined my very first study group call um, and it was awesome the ladies that are in my group are super sweet and just so kind and like ready to learn together which is really awesome and then like I kind of mentioned before it's it's really cool because these are set up so that there's a pretty wide range of like experience and skills um, and so everyone's bringing something different to the table so so far that has been awesome I really have only been to the one meeting today so I'll have more updates to come on that but yeah so that was great yeah so that's been taking a lot of my time um, this upcoming week is our first implementation week so that means no new content will be coming out so we're gonna have time to catch up on everything we haven't caught up with and then implement the skills that we've been learning so yeah so anyway that kind of vague goal that I had set out last time was just to start immersion and I have definitely done that okay the next goal that I had set out to do was to send so I'm working with a brand designer and in the last video she had sent me her initial kind of branding direction it was so exciting to see that and I haven't shared it on here yet because I want to wait until things are finalized and stuff before sharing anything but one of my goals for the in the previous video was to send my kind of initial thoughts and feedback on her on the direction that she had sent me um, and so I definitely did that and I mean overall I really love the branding that she's come up with the colors are like chef's kiss they're perfect for me and she's gone for a pretty like organic kind of look uh, so I'm really really excited and it's all done in Illustrator so <laughs> it's kind of perfect because I'm learning Illustrator right now and like I'll know how, you know how to use the files when she sends them over to me and everything so I told her when I sent my feedback like she's really busy with a lot of other client work which is awesome I'm really happy for her and I told her like no stress with me because I don't have a deadline I'm just like slowly chugging away with my website and stuff in the background so like it you know mine does not have to be prioritized um, and so that's kind of been the case so I had sent her my feedback and then we're just kind of in a holding pattern right now while she works on some of the other higher like time priorities stuff um, but I will certainly keep y'all updated when I hear kind of the next steps for my branding I'm thinking pretty soon we'll probably have some finalized uh, branding stuff so I'm really really excited to share that I'm gonna post a lot about it on Instagram so if you want some kind of real-time updates of course go over there I'm kind of nervous about this is silly okay this is silly but it's something that I've been thinking about which is like when I change my branding on my Instagram and stuff I'm like are people gonna know it's me because they haven't seen this stuff before for. And so I'm I'm really just kind of trying to strategize and think about like how I want to go about introducing my branding on my Instagram and other platforms. I guess it's really just Instagram and YouTube. So y'all will see it here too. But really, okay, I know it sounds silly, but like I post on my stories a lot. I try and post on them every day. Not because I feel like I need to, but I actually really like it. Like it's the best for me. It's the best place to engage with people. Like people are so nice to me. It's like 
I, I'm all the time with my partner. I like am on my phone and I'm like, oh my gosh, the person just said the nicest thing to me. And like, I don't know, it's anyway, when you put yourself out there and you talk on your stories and stuff like that, I just love like, you're actually able to feel connected with other people on the other side of the app, you know? Whereas sometimes with static posts and stuff, like it just doesn't feel like the same. So anyway, I post on my stories a lot and I have a decent amount of people who watch my stories and engage with my stories and stuff. And I'm like, and okay, let's be fully transparent too, because I say a decent amount of people with my itty bitty following right now that means like 50 people watch my stories okay so it's like 50 to 70 people it's not a huge amount by any means but like to me the fact that it's like 50 to 70 people regularly care what I'm saying and what I'm up to I'm like wow that's that's pretty wild so anyway I'm like what if I change my branding and if I change my profile picture to something else will they know it's me will they like click on the thing so anyway <laughs> that was a bit of a tangent but just something I've been thinking about on like how I want to you know prep my little tiny baby audience for that so we'll see I mean I'm sure I I'm not gonna just like go out and change everything I'll at once like I want to show people kind of the progress and show people kind of the thought process and then I'll share it on my stories and stuff to say like this is coming and I'll post about it and everything um and instead of just like cold turkey just like we're fully switching over so anyway that was a whole tangent I didn't plan on going into but um it is something I was thinking about so all that to say I will keep you updated with branding maybe in the next video I'll have some more updates for you okay the next goal that I had set out in my last video is a really exciting one and that was to to set up my Google workspace and my professional email. And I did that. It's just so exciting. Okay, but this is why these Big Goals Little Steps videos are super important and helpful for me is because I did that this morning, like just before I filmed this video, because I was like, well, shoot, I have to film this video and I have to talk about the progress that I've made. And I really felt like, again, the last three weeks have been so busy with other stuff. It's like, I haven't had time to do anything. So I was like, let me check what I, you know, make sure I'm on, I know what the goals I set out. And I had forgotten about this one. And I was like, oh shoot, let me do that. And so I did it. I took like an hour this morning to set that all up and it's done. And so I took a little screen recording of that. So you can see here my blank, empty Google Workspace account. So it's really exciting. I feel like this is like, you know, on one hand it was like, okay, it just took me an hour to do and it's like just a thing to check off my to-do list. But honestly, this is like one of those things that makes me feel really legit, you know? It's like no longer do I have to send people my personal email that's like first name, last name at gmail.com or whatever. It's now, you know, a professional good email. Um, so if you're watching this and if you're really interested, I would love if you could send me an email at hello at pepostudios.com. I'll put it on the screen and I'll put it in the description box. I have only received one email in that inbox so far, and that was from Google Workspace, uh, the test email that I sent myself. So <laughs> I would love for you to say hi, help me test out this account. Um, because eventually one of my kind of big picture goals is to set up a, an email newsletter and that's all going to be coming out of this inbox. It's going to be coming to you from hello at pepostudios.com. So, you know, this is a huge step for me to get the ball rolling with that and kind of get started on that front. So anyway, it's exciting and I am really looking forward to whatever emails that you send me, even if you just say, hey, I watched your video. That's really exciting. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, let's be pen pals. Um, I'm really thrilled about that. And that'll kind of go hand in hand with my website stuff. So yay, I did that goal. Okay, the next goal I had set out to do was to create some mock-ups using my jellyfish patterns based on some responses that I got to an Instagram, not a poll, but like an Instagram question box that I put up. Uh, in case you haven't seen or you forgot what I'm talking about, here's what the jellyfish patterns look like. I made them in a bunch of different colorways and I love them. They're really great. They're one of my favorite patterns that I've that I've made so far. Um, and folks on Instagram gave me a ton of ideas for like what kind of products they'd want to see them on. But I did not achieve this goal. I didn't I didn't have time to make mock-ups. I did, so I am taking um there's a series of Skillshare classes called Mock-up Academy. And if I remember, I can put a link in the description box so you can check that out if you're on Skillshare. Um, and it's really helpful in terms of 
of creating your own mockups in Photoshop because I know a lot of folks, including me previously, would just rely on like Googling mockups, either finding free mockups or people will also buy mockups in like Creative Market using smart objects in Photoshop or something where you can just like drag and drop and like place your own stuff in a pre-made mockup, which is super convenient. But I was like, there's, I need to figure out how to do this on my own. Um, there's so much more flexibility if you can figure out how to do it on your own. So that's what I've been working on is like watching the Skillshare class and like starting to kind of apply it, but I haven't actually gotten around to doing it on any of my products because honestly, for me, the biggest stumbling block right now is like figuring out where to find pictures to mock up. Like I think the easiest is if you take your own pictures, but there's certain things that like, I don't have the product that I would want to mock up something onto. So I know um, there's, there's ways to do this and that's something I'll get more into when I talk about my goals for the next three weeks, but for two weeks, we're gonna stick with two weeks. But all that to say, no, I didn't achieve that goal, um, but it is still something that I really want to do. Okay, my next goal and final goal that I set out to do was to create three new patterns. Well, I made a couple new patterns in the past few weeks. I made one using orcas, and so actually I have them right here. Let me grab them. Okay, we love a good show and tell, but I painted these orcas. <laughs> so these were just some watercolor and gouache orcas, and we're really, really trying to stick to like a limited color palette and like loose-ish looking um, subject when I create these patterns because I loved the jellyfish that I did and that's kind of what they were. And so I was like, okay, let me try and do something. Now these are a little bit more rigid than, than the jellyfish. You know, they've got like more clearly defined lines and stuff, but I still like them. So anyway, I put these together as a pattern in Photoshop and I can show you those here. So I made kind of two versions here and we've discussed this on my Instagram. So if you're one of my story watchers, you've probably seen these, but basically I created the plain background version and then I also created like a kind of crazy patterned background version as well. Um, I have this vision because like I really like a lot of the surface pattern designers I follow can really effectively kind of fill the background with a lot of filler elements and I love the way that it looks. So I'm just trying to figure out the best way for me to do that with my own style and you know the way in a way that looks good or that I think looks good and I don't love I don't know I don't know about where I landed with the orcas. Um, it was pretty split on Instagram when I asked people if they preferred the plain background or the filled pattern background, um, and people had lots of different opinions on it. Uh, someone was very enthusiastic about saying both, they're both great, and maybe that's the reality is that like there's a time and place for both of them. But anyway, so I played with those two patterns and you know, that's that. I haven't really done anything with them yet. Okay, and there's another pattern that I made. I'm pretty sure this was within the last <laughs> three weeks. Yes, it was because it was for a spoon flower challenge. My very first spoon flower challenge that I entered. I didn't set out to do this as a goal in my last two or three weeks, but it was one of my big picture goals for the year for 2023 is to enter, I think I said 12 spoon flower challenges throughout the year. So this was my very first one which was cool. And so let me show you my paintings. Here's what I painted. The challenge was called garden bedding. And so it was basically, the idea was that you're gonna create bedding, like a duvet cover, using whatever garden elements spoke to you. So these I painted with gouache, and this is all inspired by my own garden that uh, I grew, in, especially in 2020 and 2021, in our, our COVID years in my little apartment in Connecticut. Um, and so a lot of those were based on pictures that I had taken of my own produce. So that was fun. I can show you the pattern that I put together using these painted elements. Uh, it didn't didn't go great in the spoon flower challenge because so many people entered it. There were like over 2,000 people that entered this challenge, and mine placed like somewhere in the four hundreds, which honestly, when I saw that, when I first saw it, I was like, oh god, I'm in like 400th place or whatever. But then I was like, well, that's not that bad, I guess. Like I, it was in the top like 25%, right? So anyway, and that's not what it's about anyway. For me, it's like working that pattern design muscle and then just like getting inspiration and seeing what else everyone comes up with. And it might be helpful too. Like I've tried to toy with the idea of using these challenges as a way to see like what resonates with other people. Like what do people like not and I'm not saying that from a place of like I'm just gonna copy other people's styles that's definitely not the case but it's like oh okay like people seem to tend to like this type of floral or like they like this busy pattern or this simple pattern or this monochrome pattern or 
these analogous colors, you know, like whatever. It's helpful to see that kind of stuff too. But anyway, so I made those patterns and I think that's kind of it. There's some more that I'll tell you about in, in the next goals section, but those are the patterns I made. Okay, so those were my goals for the last that I set out in the last video, and it, I did okay, actually. Better than I thought I did, I think. But anyway, I had an extra week, so I guess that helps. Okay, now let's move on to the goals that I set out for myself for the next two weeks. Okay, so goal number one, no surprise here, is to just continue going with immersion. So as I mentioned, modules one and two are already out. This coming week is an implementation week, and then the following week is going to be a module three. So hopefully by the time I'm filming my next Big Goals Little Steps video, I'll have just finished module three, or at least be kind of close to finish with module three. So we shall see how that goes. But during this next implementation week, I really do want to spend it um, pretty intentionally playing with all the new tools that I've learned and then like trying to figure out how my style using these you know hand-painted elements how this kind of translates into Illustrator. I actually with this garden pattern, I originally painted these with the intention of bringing them into Illustrator because I used like relatively solid colors and a relatively limited color color palette as well. Um, but I ended up doing it all in Photoshop because that's just wh where I love the most. <laughs> but maybe I will try and do that kind of same thing in Illustrator. What I've found though is that I run into problems when I try and expect Illustrator to do the things that Photoshop does. In reality, they're totally different programs used for totally different things and so I think I just need to play some more with like developing my vectorized signature style like what does that mean what does that look like for me how do I maintain the like hand-drawn hand-painted feeling in vectors um, and that's something that's kind of covered in module 3 or excuse me module 2 that I'm working on right now so you know that's something I'm going to focus on in the next couple of weeks okay my next goal I'm setting out for myself is to actually enter a few spoon flower challenges so I am never going to be the person who tries to enter every single spoon flower challenge every week. It's just that wouldn't work for me. But I do want to enter the challenges that kind of speak to me, that inspire me, because I think that's where I'm going to be creating my best work rather than just like doing it because I feel like I have to do it. So there's actually a handful coming up that do inspire me and that have gotten me excited and that I would really love to enter. So the first is one that's actually due this week. It's due in like two days and I'm I'm almost done with my design for it. It's for East Fork which is a ceramic like pottery company based in North Carolina. And it sounds like they have a partnership for Spoonflower throughout the year. So I'm guessing there's gonna be some more East Fork design challenges coming up, but it's basically to showcase their new glazes that are called Butter and Piglet. They're kind of a, exactly what you'd imagine, like a light pink and a light yellow glaze. And so I've been working on a design for that. Um, so that should be coming soon. I'll show you it in my next video. Um, I can give you a little sneak peek of the design that I'm thinking about for this challenge and I'll show you the full thing in the next video. Um, but I've gone through several different iterations of what this might look like. So anyway, that is one of the challenges coming up. There's another one that's called Abstract Animal Prints. That also seemed to speak my name. So the prompt is specifically talking about things like if we take like a traditional leopard print or zebra stripe, or tiger stripe or something like that and then make it abstract like do something weird or crazy like distort it or make it crazy colors and things like that so i'm trying to think about what would be the best for me with that because i don't really want to do any of those like a tiger stripe or i don't know they seem too traditional to me like there's a lot of tiger stripe patterns out there so i was like mm, i want to do something weird and different um their cover photo for the the challenge was a, like butterfly wings, which is an interesting idea. I've also thought about like pigeon feathers. Like people, I know everyone hates pigeons, but like I love looking at their iridescent neck feathers. It's so cool. So, and they're the beautiful like blue and green and purple. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do for that one, but that is one of my goals. Okay. And then there's one more spoon flower challenge that I am particularly excited about. It's like the one that I've like the most excited I've been about a spoon flower challenge. And it's one that's called doodle bugs. It's perfect for my niche. <laughs> my niche being the person who hand paints um, elements for these designs and also has a background in bug research. I've done a ton of bug stuff in the past. Like my my background is in ecology and environmental science. And so uh, I've done a lot of bug 
bug work. And so I'm really excited for this one. I have some ideas already for what that's gonna look like. That pattern design or that challenge is still like three weeks out, I think. So I might not be done with it by the time we get to the next big goals little steps video, but I will at least have some progress. I really, even today, I might start painting some elements for it. So we shall see. Okay, and then my last goal for the upcoming two weeks is to create at least one mock-up to use on my website. So I mentioned this a little bit in my goals for the last two weeks, but I've been watching this mock-up academy uh, Skillshare series and I'm like, okay, I need to do this. And so my vision for my website is to have a portfolio page, which I've already kind of built. And so I, I have the framework for it and I have a few designs kind of in there already. You'll see it. I'll let you know when my website is live. <laughs> We're not there yet. But basically the way it works is that when you click on a design, so okay, you go to my portfolio page and you see however many little squares that show the different designs. Like it's kind of like a thumbnail of my different designs with their names and stuff like that. Then when you click on an individual design, so you can click on my jellyfish design, for example, it'll bring you to a page that has like several mock-ups in it of like, here's the design on curtains and here it is on a napkin or you know whatever um they might not be the same for every design but um basically my vision is to create a few mock-ups that i can use for all my designs across my website so however that would be i mean you know maybe i have like 10 of them or something like that and then apply them to every design and put them all on my website so that's the vision i am not setting myself the goal of doing all of that in the next two weeks because immersion takes up all my time all the time so instead i'm gonna say let's try and do one one of them and see how that goes. So I'm hoping that's an achievable goal for me. It'll probably end up being a really simple mock-up, like something like, you know, a notebook or something like that, <laughs> just to keep it easy for right now. But I am learning about fabric mock-ups and stuff using like the puppet warp tool and things like that in Photoshop. So that will be coming too at some point. But for now, I am keeping it easy, trying to like lighten my load around immersion basically. Okay, so that is it. So those are my goals that I have for the next two weeks. So just a quick recap of what those goals are. Okay, the first of my goals is to complete immersion modules one through three. Um, so I've, I'm almost done with module two now. Next week's our implementation week and then module three will be the week after that. So just gonna keep chugging along with immersion. Okay, my second goal that I have for the next couple of weeks is to enter a few Spoonflower challenges. So there's the East Fork Butter and Piglet challenge, there's the Abstract Animal Prints, and then the Doodle Bugs challenge. So we're gonna see what that looks like, but my goal would, it would be awesome if I could enter all three of those. A reminder though that that Doodle Bugs challenge is, I think, happening after I'm gonna be filming this next video, so I might not be done with that. I'm giving myself some leeway <laughs> just in case I'm not totally done with that one by the time we get to my next video. Okay, and then my third and final goal for the next couple of weeks is to create at least one mock up that I can use in my website. So we'll see what that looks like, but I will bring you along for the journey. Okay, so those are my goals. I'm trying to keep it short and simple um, in terms of my to do list for the next couple of weeks as long as I'm doing immersion because that's just taking a lot of my time. But thank you for sticking along here with me. And just a quick reminder that if you have it in your heart, send me an email at hello at pepostudios.com. I really want to test out my new professional email and I would love to say hi to you. And all right, let's, let's do this. If you send me an email between now and April 8th, 2023, I will respond to you with a picture of one or more of my foster kittens that I had in, throughout the pandemic. I have thousands of pictures of little baby kittens. So if you want a kitten picture, send me an email and I'll send you one. <laughs> and just a reminder that if you are interested to see kind of more real-time updates on the progress that I'm making and also help me make decisions about my designs and stuff like that, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. And also, if you watch my stories, that's going to be the best place to find that kind of information because like I said, I do try and post there a lot. So you can find me at Peppo Studios, just like here on YouTube. And yeah, that will be the best way to kind of see where I'm, where I'm going with these goals. So anyway, with that, thanks for sticking along with me and I will see you very soon for the next video. Take care, everyone.